Hello guys, this is Vaish. Today is day 22, May 29. So this is science episode 2. Hope you have watched the yesterday's episode and all the other previous episodes because 21 days of quiz has been already been made available and this will help you clear the prelims if you practice it regularly. All the tests are taken from our test series. All the questions are taken from our test series and uh, batch 6 with a uh, 120 days detailed uh, study timetable is already launched. 2022 test series final announcement will happen next week and uh, all the details are already present here. So please watch these two videos based on which batch you are preparing for. And uh, Vaish Courses video, please subscribe and give your feedback because every day we are trying to make innovative topics which will help you understand the things which is happening in news and then you can go and uh, debate with uh, friends or maybe discuss with uh, someone who is interested in knowing it because everybody in WhatsApp are um, forwarding issues and related videos but uh, the facts are not accurate. That is where we started this initiative to give you the right facts researched uh, uh, on all the newspapers and international websites. So please see to it that you uh, watch this and share to everyone. Today's first question, which of the following are true? When seen from the North Pole, the Earth rotates anti-clockwise. Second, the surface velocity of rotation varies from point to point on the Earth. Third one, most rockets are launched from western coast to syncline with west to east direction of Earth's rotation. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2 only, 2, 3 only, 1, 3 only. So this kind of questions you can categorize under geography also. But uh, we have put uh, this uh, science test 2 related to space, uh, space missions and all those uh, uh, defense missions. So because it's related to this uh, rocket launch also, we thought of inc incorporating in this particular test. So the answer is B, 1, 2 only. The rockets are uh, launched actually from the eastern coast. Okay, because the Earth will be rotating west to east, if you know. That's why when the North Pole, if you you can just imagine something is rotating west to east, and you look at from the North Pole, you will appear, you will see it like it is going in the anti-clockwise direction, like this. Okay, it will not be in the clockwise direction. It will be in the anti-clockwise direction if it is west to east. So the statement one is true, and statement two is also true. Okay, you, you know, like west to east, it's going, and that is why the eastern side will be having the sunrise first, or seeing the sunrise first, and then only we will see. Like uh, that is why Japan is also called the land of rising sun. It's on the east of the uh, map if you see. So like that, uh, there are certain um, simple facts you will understand if you know the basics. The surface velocity of rotation varies from point to point on the earth. That is also true. It is about 1600 km per hour or about 460 uh, meters in a second near the equator. The velocity gradually reduces as we move to the poles and it is practically zero there. Okay, the surface velocity of rotation. Because if the shape is like that, so the pole will be just a point. So there, uh, the velocity will be practically zero. A satellite launched from the sites near the equator towards the eastern direction will get an initial boost equal to the velocity of Earth's surface. This is similar to an athlete uh, circling round and round before throwing a discus or a shot put. The initial boost helps in cutting down the cost of rockets used to launch the satellites. This is the major reason for launching satellites in the eastward direction from eastern coast. But this benefit can be taken only for such satellites which are placed in geostationary orbit or which circle the Earth parallel to the equator. Such satellites are usually communication satellites or satellites used for scientific research such as ISS, okay, International Space, uh, Space Station. So uh, the basics of orbits and satellites you have to study. Okay, You cannot tell like it's like very scientific or technical. It's actually very easy. You have to study. There are many questions already in our test series also and many of our videos also I have explained most of them. So you should know different types like uh, uh, lower earth orbit, medium earth, high earth. Then there is this uh, polar orbit, geostationary orbit, geosynchronous orbit. Okay, all these are very, very basics and you have to know. Only then you will understand when uh, different type of satellites you study. And then the satellite launch vehicle you study. Okay, right from SLV, then we had PSLV, we have GSLV, now we have GSLV Mark Three. Okay, so you have to know all these, like UPSC have asked, okay, very detailed question UPSC have asked, so you cannot tell like, uh, I will skip that topic, okay, you have to study and just a one day effort, please uh, research on you Google, there are thousands of articles and uh, infographs and images and YouTube videos based on this topic, so please study. So there are other satellites which are placed in polar orbits moving across the equator in north-south direction and used mainly for mapping or sometimes for spying, okay, on the pole if you keep a satellite, it is for this purposes. Such satellites are generally launched in southward or northward direction and therefore cannot take advantage of the Earth's rotation. Another characteristic of launching satellite is the launching stations are generally located near eastern coastline so that just in case of failure of the launch, the satellite does not fall on uh, built up hinterland. Okay, so it will be falling into the ocean if something crashes also. So uh, this is the very basic about uh, 
uh, uh, this question. But as I told you, you have to research more. Which of the following is false about GSAT-11? It is an advanced communication satellite weighing more than 5000 kg. It is launched by GSLV Mark III recently into the geosynchronous transfer orbit. One only, two only, both one and two, neither one or two. So here the question is which of the following is false. Okay, hope you have noticed that. It's asking for the false statement. That is two is false or so one is true. That is it is an advanced communication satellite weighing more than 5000 kg. That is true. Okay, it's like one of the heaviest uh, uh, satellite uh, built by ISRO, ISRO. So UPSC have already asked similar question because this actually is checking your uh, knowledge level. Like if you see the current affair, you will know like uh, GSL, uh, sorry, GSAT-11 was launched. GSAT-11 was launched by whom? It was launched not by India because Indian, Indian uh, satellite launch vehicles don't have the capacity now to uh, launch something of this weight to the geosynchronous transfer orbit. We can do it to the low earth orbit, okay, but we cannot do it till here. So that we have to depend on other uh, foreign uh, space uh, launching sites. So here it was successfully launched in December 2018 from the French Guyana by the Ariane 5. Okay, this Ariane 5 VA, this is the satellite launching vehicle. So we usually when we are very heavy satellites, we give it there. Okay, as of now, but hopefully we'll soon build the new one in which we ourselves can carry. So if you see here, GSLV Mark III can lift only up to 4000 kilogram into geosynchronous transfer orbit. It can lift up to 8000 in the low earth orbit. So this is the maximum capacity what ISRO can do right now. So because our uh, this satellite is 5000 kilo, 5800 this much kilo, we cannot do it. Okay, so that is why the second statement is false. It is launched by GSLV Mark III recently into geosynchronous. That is false. So you had to know the basic understanding. You could have solved this question. Okay. There's more details about GSLV Mark III. It's a three-stage uh, three heavy lift launch vehicle developed by ASRO. The vehicle has two solid strap-ons, a, co a core liquid booster, which is called the Vikas engine, and a cryogenic upper stage. Okay, cryogenic also, uh, mains question have come. Then uh, GSLV Mark III is designed to carry 4 ton, okay, that is 4,000 uh, kilo class of satellites into geosynchronous orbit and 10 tons, okay, uh, that is up to, to 10,000 uh, into low Earth orbit, which is about twice the capacity or capability of GSLV Mark II. Okay, so again more details are here, it can be, maybe you will like feel sound technical, that is because you are not knowing the basics, if you know the basics, you, we are just building upon that, okay, the weight, the height, the engine, the liquid or solid components, so it's just building upon certain features after you know the basics. 100 years program seen recently in the news is a space mission by ISRO, NASA, UAE or China. So to give you a clue, it is actually 2017 program, 2017 to 2117. By that year, uh, this mission will get complete. So this is by whom? And this is related to uh, Mars. So the answer here is UAE. UAE announced 100 year plan to finish building first city on Mars by 2117. Okay, now this Elon Musk of SpaceX, he's also planning the same. So the UAE will build the first city on the red planet as part of 217, 2117 Mars project in collaboration with specialized international organizations and scientific institutes. The announcement was made on the sidelines of the World Government Summit in the presence of these many people. So more details are here. It's again about the Mars because Mars, every country is at least uh, tried and failed or tried and succeeded. India was one country who tried and uh, uh, reached there in the very first attempt, okay, in the full world and that uh, cost which is like very low, okay. So that is why even a movie came based on the uh, mission Mars. So you can see that movie also, you will, you will understand a little more technical details. So this is a, a GK you can tell, but you basically sometimes ask this kind of questions. Which of the following are true about biochemical oxygen demand? Swage water is usually treated with microbes till the BOD reduces to a significant low level. The greater the BOD of wastewater, the more is its polluting potential. One only, two only, one and two, none. You basically have asked a question on this already in I think 2019. A question has come on uh, biological oxygen demand. So here both are true. BOD, it is the amount of dissolved oxygen needed or demanded by aerobic biological organi organisms to break down organic material present in a given water sample at a certain temperature over a specific period of time. Meaning how much oxygen is required for the organism to break down the organic material. Okay. So more demand is there means more you have to break down. Break down what? Organic material. That means more pollution is there. 
so more the bod of waste water more is the polluting potential so that is why this is true okay cod which uh, question has not yet come chemical oxygen demand is a measure of the capacity of water to consume oxygen during the decomposition of organic matter and the oxidation of inorganic chemicals such as ammonia and nitrate so it's like a little bit more uh, detailing you have to study in this like it's the capacity of water to consume oxygen during the decomposition of what during decomposition of organic matter and the oxidation of inorganic chemicals also okay not only organic inorganic chemicals such as ammonia and nitrate so this is chemical oxygen demand jatropha recently in the news is an example of first generation biofuel produced directly from food crops like wheat or sugar second generation generation biofuel produced from non food crops like food crops uh, food crops waste and specific biomass third generation biofuel by taking algae as its energy source fourth generation biofuel which involves carbon negative process and like other generation which are carbon neutral so you get the definition of all the generation of biofuels also here and you have to tell uh, jatropha is under which category so it is a second generation one okay it is a genus of uh, flowering plants in the spurge family this is the family the name is derived from the greek word whatever it is it doesn't matter and it's not concerning upsc preparation so every detail may not be required you should understand more about the biofuel topic because even mains question is there there is a biofuel mission is there uh, 2018 with rules and regulations and many things government is working towards it uh, to reduce the import cost of petroleum and all these things we are working on biofuels and various other sources so you have to work on that aspect rather than the gk about this plant okay so here uh, this is the test series details this uh, thumbnail please go and watch this videos and get back us on whatsapp and subscribe to this channel and vice courses channel also because uh, the content there is going to help you in the long way even in interview you can uh, give uh, correct points instead of telling what is uh, like being spread on the social media please study relevant facts i'll come up with tomorrow's episode thank you and have a nice day